outrageous water bills, poor customer service, thousands of complaints going unheard. A department so bad, the federal government once stepped in to protect customers. Tonight, serious questions whether their rights continue to be violated. Our year-long Five on Your Side investigation reveals how Cleveland Water, which serves more than one million people in five counties, in 79 communities, is drowning in dysfunction. Good evening, I'm Rob Powers, along with Danita Harris. Cleveland Water customers spend nearly $300 million a year for water. But our exclusive investigation found it ranks almost dead last in customer service compared with utilities across the country. And all of the people sitting here behind us believe they are being cheated. On your side, Chief Investigator Ron Regan has been on this story, asking questions for more than a year, and he's uncovered a water department that preys on the elderly, the sick, and the disabled. Our News 5 investigative team uncovered a wide range of complaints from customers who say the department is more concerned about profits than people. How many of you have been overbilled by the Cleveland Water Department? Show of hands. All, every one of you from outrageous bills. But it was not a normal water bill. It was five times the amount of water that we typically use. To poor customer service. It's just the way that you're being treated. Meanwhile, Cleveland Water, your only source, is spending $300,000 in advertising, promotion, and marketing on everything from water bottles to toothbrushes. Hand sanitizers and toothbrushes and backpacks it sounds more like your Walmart than the water department. Well, what it does is it gives us an opportunity to create engagement. Last year alone, 16,000 water customers complained they were overbilled. At the same time, 44,000 shutoff notices were sent out. For some, it can mean losing their home. We found over the last three years alone, the water department turned over nearly eight thousand water customers to the Cuyahoga County Auditor, slapping liens on their homes. And it just got my blood boiling because, you know, I lost my home because of them. We'll have more on that in a few minutes, including growing concerns over whether a federal consent decree that created a water review board to hear billing disputes is being ignored. And I think run because I didn't even know you guys existed. Didn't even know. Plus, Unlike other major utilities that are subject to state regulation by the Ohio Public Utilities Commission, the Cleveland Division of Water goes both unregulated and unchecked. It reports to no one, except a city council committee with no interest in how a city department treats its water customers. How many complaints are you aware of that the water department has received? I have no idea. But we do. The News 5 investigative team documented more than 16,000 water customer complaints last year alone. On your side, investigator Jonathan Walsh uncovers the stories behind those questionable bills. Well, Ron, as you know, we have been flooded with complaints and they all have a similar feel to them. People saying that bills come out of nowhere. I mean, we're talking crazy high bills that customers have said there's no way we could have possibly used that much water. I am stuck with a, a, a water bill that's $3,816 and a sewer bill that's $1,700. Jackie McFarquhar is fighting her 82-year-old mother's Cleveland water bill. Her mother is confined to her bed and a stroke victim. Could she have used that much water? Could not possible because she's been sick. We found more individual accounts bombarded with baffling bills, including Nina Jones. She was charged more than six grand for water she said she didn't touch. But what I do have a problem with is being robbed by my utility company. Even outrageous bills to places where nobody lives. We got a, a water bill for a vacant building that said we owed over $2,000. The Cleveland Division of Water explains some of these bills are because of leaks, but customers like Willie Mae Reese... I'm getting confused about this water bill thing now. ...insist there were no leaks. Willie Mae got a hefty bill of $7,000. Here's what happened when she tried to explain her objection to Cleveland Water's customer service. There's no water being used. 
She told me we charge you if you don't use no water. They did charge me. Francisco Vasquez found that out the hard way. Water doesn't even have to be running for customers to get a bill. This has been completely bone dry for 30 years. That didn't stop the water department from charging Francisco thousands of dollars on his property in Cleveland. It's a highway robbery. How are they going to charge me for something I've never consumed, I've never had, and I've never used? The frustration level is probably the highest frustration level that I've had dealing with any organization at any level in my life. Frustration shared by the charity-driven Moose Lodge in Northfield Village. It's one of the more puzzling bills we've seen, charged for using such massive amounts of water that the lodge owed $16,000 for water and sewer. The city engineer for Northfield Village wrote, the high water readings cannot be justified as a water fixture leak. I don't know where we're going to get the $16,000. And if we do come up with it, some charitable organizations that are going to suffer in the meantime while we're trying to get that money back. Um, so it's just a sad situation. And remember Jackie McFarquhar, whose mother is a bedridden stroke victim? Her bills were eventually examined in a very rare instance by the Water Review Board only to lose and be forced to pay thousands for water she's never consumed. Whether you use that to cook, clean, wash your cars, give your mother a bath, or just let it run down the toilet, it's not really our concern. And remember, these are just a few of the examples of the many calls and emails we've received from you, the viewer, after the Cleveland Water Department failed to respond. These are not new complaints. Eight years ago, anger sparked public meetings, hearings, and millions in consultant fees to fix a troubled department. Investigator Joe Paganakis was here when those meetings went down and customers first complained about lousy service. Well, there's no question it's been a turbulent decade for the Cleveland Division of Water. And our series of News 5 investigations since 2008 have revealed a wide variety of systemic failures that have produced thousands of consumer complaints and millions in your tax dollars spent on consultants to clean it up. Problems for the Cleveland Division of Water first boiled over in 2008 when News 5 uncovered an Ohio auditor report showing nearly 35,000 water meters were broken, preventing actual readings, thus producing bogus bills. They just kept estimating the bill? Yes, for the past seven years. An issue that caused Ying Shen of Highland Heights to get estimated bills for 80 months, with Cleveland Water overcharging him $7,500. In 2009, my story generated hundreds of letters from Northeast Ohio consumers who were being overcharged. Then, in 2010... Your estimated wait time is... 16 minutes. My News 5 investigation uncovered Water Department customer service wait times that averaged 35 minutes. I asked then-Public Utilities Director Barry Withers why. They call the Water Department and they can't get through. And they say their wait times are very, very high. How do you answer to that? I, I would say that they are correct, and we are working every resource we got to try to resolve that. In 2011, I took my News 5 investigation to Mayor Frank Jackson, the city then launching the Cleveland Water Turnaround Project. Cleveland Water hiring additional meter readers and customer service personnel. You have to remember, Joe, that we got behind uh, through attrition. Cleveland Division of Water says that you owe more than $53,000. Cleveland Water vowed to improve collection on big corporate offenders. Months later, it launched a series of public customer service meetings for consumers coping with billing inaccuracies. I won't feel better until I see my bill shrink back down to normal. In 2013, Cleveland Water was well into phase one of replacing 420,000 water meters with wireless units, costing more than $80 million. I asked to uh, speak to a supervisor. I wasn't able to, and they did not give me any other options. Consumers like Rick Voyers of Bay Village complained the new meters had major glitches, producing bills of several hundred dollars for water that was never used. And so nearly eight years after we first revealed serious billing errors within the water department and millions spent to fix it, widespread consumer complaints continue. But the dysfunction in the Cleveland Water Department does not end there. Those meetings inspired a customer bill of rights, a bill of rights that's been routinely trampled on and ignored not just by customer service representatives, but by the review board that's supposed to ensure people are treated fairly. Despite the problems here in Cleveland, we have learned about utilities that are treating their customers so well, they're being recognized as the best nationally. So we head south to profile the water department that
that even offers to forgive outrageous bills. Tonight, you're watching Drowning in Dysfunction, our special investigation into the failings of the Cleveland Water Department. Already tonight, we've introduced you to customers who have received water bills so high they couldn't possibly have used the amounts listed. Some didn't even have a connection to Cleveland Water. And we've shown you the pattern of complaints that goes back nearly a decade. And our investigation has uncovered that when Cleveland water customers attempt to battle back against those ridiculous bills, it usually ends in frustration. We're talking about paid customer service representatives hanging up on customers, rude behavior on top of those egregious billing mistakes. And as Ron Regan explains, it's your water bill paying their salaries. At the Cleveland Water Department, they've taken service out of customer service. Instead, we found dozens of call takers who'd be fired anywhere else. And customers have said they've had enough. I said I wear customer service if I ever treated a uh, customer, we had to put patients, but a customer the way I was treated, I would no longer have a job. Denise Kaufman called Cleveland Water for help. For quality assurance and training purposes, your call may be monitored or recorded. Her bill was double what she normally pays. Describe for me the quality of customer service you experienced. The representative was completely rude. But we found Denise and scores of others are routinely abused and ignored by the very people they're paying to help understand their bills. We obtained nearly 300 pages of disciplinary records. We found one of every three violated water department policies ranging from neglect of duty to excessive absenteeism. Once I called and tried to make contact with the water company and was treated so rude. 74-year-old Thelma Davis never missed paying a single water bill, about $100. Then one day, her daughter found this. Screaming, Mama, you have a bill for $27,000 worth of water. I mean, what kind of bill is this? What did, something happened I don't know about? A $27,000 water bill. Thelma trusted she could call the water department and at least get an explanation. So just how rudely are customers treated? We found tape recordings revealing employees providing inaccurate billing, hanging up, and repeatedly interrupting customers who help pay more than $3 million a year in salaries for a squadron of 94 customer service reps. Plus, we found others reading at desks, using cell phones for personal calls, even making inappropriate sexual advances over the phone. And one customer service rep was overheard screaming, I would have her up, not about to take no from no one. And there's almost no consequence for rude behavior. Every one of 32 disciplined employees remains on the payroll, receiving only suspended days from work. But there are consequences for the water department. Cleveland is ranked um, one above the lowest across the whole of the nation. Andrew Heath is with J.D. Power, the most recognized customer service firm in the world. It found Cleveland's water department is ranked nearly dead last compared with others nationwide. The city of Cleveland was one of the water utilities nationwide that had more than most customers calling up saying they had a problem with the bill and that the bill was too high. The Cleveland Water Department declined to respond, but more than 200 water customers did. In an exclusive News5Cleveland.com survey, 90% rated customer service as terrible and 96% said they were never told of their right to a water board review. So you may be wondering, does anyone really do this the right way? Good question, Rob, and the answer is a resounding yes. In fact, the well-known J.D. Power actually rated the nation's utilities. And on your side, investigator Jonathan Walsh looks south to Miami to see how they're serving customers better. It's a first-of-its-kind study done by J.D. Power, and the people running Miami-Dade Water say they're proud to be the best in the country. Its approach is different, and it seems to be working with its customers. Customer service is our most important aspect of our business operation. Lester Sola is the director of Miami-Dade Water and Sewer. It's rated number one out of the 84 largest water utilities in the country. We really don't exist unless we're able to take care of our customers. They've hired more employees. They've extended hours of service. They've re-engineered the way customer calls are handled. Really, we are a monopoly, but, but 
that shouldn't skew the way we look at ourselves and our ability to be responsive to, to our customers. Meanwhile, in Cleveland, customers like Gerilyn Ward, who's 85 years old and disabled, have told us all they get are threats about huge unexplained bills. Pay or else. That, that was their message. That, that's what I got. I mean, pay or else. All of the factors, which include billing and payments, were pushing the scores down. Andrew Heath from J.D. Power told me Clevelanders report they want water quality at affordable rates and better customer service. There are clearly is potential room for improvements um, that is available to the organization to be able to better engage with and provide better service to customers in the city of Cleveland. Instead, Cleveland Water is quick to place tax liens on customers like Gerilyn. If I have to pay all that, it will be long, I'll be gone. I don't think I'd live that long. However, at the number one rated Miami-Dade... Ultimately, the department does have the abilities to establish liens on properties, but rarely, if ever, does it, rarely, if ever, does it get to that. Remember the outrageous bills from Cleveland Water that don't have pinpointed causes? Well, in Miami... We're one of the few, if any, utilities that actually provides credits to customers for basically underground leaks or leaks that cannot be explained, and it's really not through no fault of the customer. In fact, we've told you about Northfield Village Moose Lodge on the hook for many water readings 100 times normal use. Miami-Dade takes a much different stance. A customer can take a once-in-a-lifetime credit for a water leak uh, or a, a, an extremely high water bill, six times their normal rate, for something that cannot be explained. And remember when we showed you our undercover video? A News 5 producer went in person to the main water building downtown just to get info about a disputed bill. Like, what else can she do? That's all she can do right now. Okay. J.D. Power said the almost lowest-ranked Cleveland Water needs to work with its employees. Making sure that you're responsive, making sure that you're answering their questions first time, and making sure that you're getting the bills out correctly. Employee support that is happening at the top-rated Miami-Dade. There's no fear of going outside of the norm to provide exceptional customer service. J.D. Power surveys all kinds of businesses when it comes to customer service, and they say the ones that come out on top, like Southwest Airlines, truly have a focus on customer service from top to bottom, and they empower their employees to actually help Customers. And tonight we've learned the board appointed to help advocate for you, the customers, does anything but, and it may even be violating its own rules. Next, Ron Regan makes the case it's time for an overhaul. Drowning in dysfunction, first a slow drip, then a flood of complaints against the Cleveland Water Department, brings us to this point. Customers and entire cities fed up, calling for change. Tonight you've seen the problems and the solutions that can be found if the department commits to improvement. But we've uncovered another strong arm tactic and this one could cost you your home. Chief Investigator Ron Regan caught the water department going after what some families spend a lifetime trying to achieve. Simply put, it's the American dream, but we found the Cleveland Division of Water is trying to destroy that for thousands of families. They're preying on families and individuals who are, you know, stressed out in many ways in other situations and to add this on is very difficult. That's how Sherry Gordon describes what happened to her sister's home. Our mortgage went from, you know, a normal mortgage to about $4,500. $4,500 per month. month. Right. What did that do to you? it caused us to have to, you know, sell the home. I mean, we would have foreclosed, we would have lost the home. And it all began with a $3,000 bill for water she says they never used. And despite repeatedly questioning how their bill could suddenly skyrocket, Sherry says they received no answers until the monthly mortgage arrived. They um, cowardly passed the bill or the invoice onto our mortgage holder. That's right. Instead of providing answers, Cleveland Water allowed the bill to escalate to over $30,000 and slapped it onto the mortgage as a tax lien. Did they alert you that they were going to do this or did this come as a total surprise? It came as a total surprise to us. Never told you they put this on a tax lien? Never told us that they put it on a tax lien. A tax lien that forced the sale for a loss just to avoid foreclosure.
it's incredible. I mean, it's a huge, huge number of um, customers that are having their uh, bills assessed um, onto their property taxes. How many? We found nearly 8,000 water tax liens on homes across Cuyahoga County over just the last three years. In fact, Cleveland Water has been so aggressive, nearly four times as many homeowners are facing tax liens since 2013. We showed our findings to the Cleveland Legal Aid Society. Does this contribute to the foreclosure crisis? I think it does contribute to the foreclosure crisis. A crisis that since 2012 created more than 25,000 foreclosures in Cuyahoga County alone. Frank Ford has spent years researching foreclosures. It's a red flag to suggest that this should be looked at carefully because I think there's some evidence that if we're not careful about how we go about collecting, if we're too aggressive, we end up shooting ourselves in the foot. Ford says of those 3,600 water tax liens in 2015, one in 10 resulted in foreclosure, and one in three of those ended up vacant, increasing the likelihood of crime and vandalism. If they just lean hard on people who may be uh, financially strained, they could end up forcing those people out of their home over a you know, several thousand dollar bill and end up in foreclosure, you end up with a vacant home. Plus, it costs taxpayers plenty, $10,000 to demolish just one foreclosed home. And while no one knows just how many foreclosures can be blamed on water tax liens. What causes us significant concern is that there um, are often times where the water department is not properly billing customers. I know from personal experience that the water department does overbill people and it can be a very long and difficult process to try to resolve that bill dispute. There's also concern the Cleveland Water Department is violating a federal court ruling protecting water customers' rights. Did anyone at, from the very beginning say to you, you have a right to a Water Review Board hearing? Never, never. The Water Review Board was created by this 1987 federal consent decree, created to help water customers facing excessive bills and threatened shutoffs. There are thousands of people, customers, and, and I can't speak to that. There's certainly a possibility that those violations are out there. Hearing about your story on the radio, um, I was driving and I heard that you were doing a report on the water department and it just got my blood boiling because, you know, I lost my home because of them. And attorneys for Cleveland Legal Aid are so concerned that customers' rights may be violated, they're encouraging water customers to contact them immediately. Thank you for joining us tonight for our year-long investigation into Cleveland water. But our investigation is far from over, and we will continue to ask questions and demand answers from your leaders at the department. And we begin tonight with an exclusive News 5 investigation and an explosive interview with a former Cleveland Water Department manager. It comes just one day after our exclusive half-hour investigation into billing tactics and customer service complaints. On your side, Chief Investigator Ron Regan shows us how his claims seem to support what customers have been telling us all year. Well, that's right. It's one thing to hear water customers describe how they've been treated. Quite another to hear from a former top manager blowing the whistle on what he says is really going on inside the water department. I saw the lady on TV the other day that was concerned about her home. Elena had been placed on her home. And, and to see that lady cry because of water, nobody should have to do that ever. So John Evans is the former chief safety officer for the Cleveland Division of Water and he remembers top management meetings. What was the driving theme at those meetings? Get the money back. He's speaking out after seeing our investigation into the department posting nearly 8,000 water bills as tax liens on homes. If they don't get you one way, they're going to get you another way, and they will eventually get the money and or your home and or whatever else instead of sitting down and working out a program that's realistic for this person to continue to live a life that they can support themselves. Emmons admits he left the water department after seven months of hardball tactics. And that included get money at all costs? That includes getting money at all costs. And stunned by what he witnessed. It's a callous system, and the most callous people that I know are running the system. How high up did that go? To the, to the director. 
and department heads. And department heads. For example, we found this 85-year-old water customer, disabled and wheelchair-bound, threatened with a $10,000 water bill that's now a tax lien on her home. If I have to pay all that, it will be long, I'll be gone. I don't think I'd live that long. Here comes this gigantic bill. And this 74-year-old woman who had a $30,000 tax lien placed on her home. After repeatedly trying to get answers for nearly three years, she sued. Cleveland Water settled the case. Once I called and tried to make contact with the water company and was treated so rude. People that are in charge are saying, no, get the money. But if they could all sit down and say, this is what we're going to do, this is the plan that we're going to have that would assist people who are in their 80s and 90s who are living on assisted uh, living and or they have a small income from their Social Security or something, that they're not taking every dime to where they can't su support themselves or have any other things uh, such as food. And still another case where Mayor Frank Jackson once posed with Odessa Parks and her late husband on their 50th wedding anniversary. Today, his water department is shaking her down. Yes, they'll have to take the house. <laughs> I can't come up with no more than $10,000 because, you know, that's the bad part about it because you're paying taxes. They would hound you until they actually got what they had to, up in, including putting liens on your home. And I think that was a little bit too far. I think it was a little bit overzealous. But you've got to realize that the department ran everything there. They were the money makers. They, were, they brought the revenue in. This was the cash cow. This is the cash cow for the city of Cleveland and the Department of Public Utilities. Meanwhile, a leading organization of more than 40 Cleveland area churches is calling for action. United Pastors in Mission is calling for a moratorium on water tax liens and hearings into questionable billing tactics. I'm Chief Investigator Ron Regan. Now, the Cleveland Division of Water declined still another offer to go on camera and answer questions about its tactics. Instead, it released this statement referencing the former top manager you just heard from, saying, quote, he was responsible for employee safety and risk management, and his responsibilities did not involve customer service or billing activities. The flood of problems growing for Cleveland Water. Dozens of local pastors unite and call for change. As Chief Investigator Ron Regan explains, after our exclusive investigation into the Water Department, one of Cleveland's most respected pastors wants hearings. Well, that's right. Dr. Larry Macon Sr. is president of United Pastors in Mission, and he's alarmed at what's happening to water customers in 70 communities served by Cleveland Water. That's Odessa Parks and her late husband being honored by Mayor Frank Jackson on their 50th wedding anniversary. Two years later, the mayor's water department filed a water tax lien on the home they own. Yes, they'll have to take the house. <laughs> I can't come up with no more than $10,000 because, you know, that's the bad part about it because you're paying... Taxes. She's among nearly 9,000 who are targets of the Cleveland Water Department in just the last three years. Tax bills for water many, like Odessa Parks, say they didn't even use. Our year-long investigation is now raising serious concerns among one of Cleveland's most respected religious leaders. Many are sick, disabled, elderly, and now they are fearful of losing their homes. Your reaction? Well, first of all, um, my prayers go out for those folk, and um, I'm extre extremely saddened uh, by those folk, and also being a leader in the uh, religious community and among clergy. Uh, we're very upset also about what we have recently uh, heard. Uh, these are our also not only the community, but these are also members of our churches. Reverend Dr. Larry Macon is pastor of Mount Zion Church and president of United Pastors in Mission, comprised of more than 40 area churches. And he's calling for immediate action. There ought to be a moratorium set for these folk as well. I think for at least one year to three years, there ought to be a pause where you're starting to review 
what is going on with these families? How can we help them? Our investigation has also documented rude and unprofessional treatment of water customers. When they go down to talk about their bills, when they call in, if there's no courtesy, then somebody needs to be released from their uh, positions. And you would call for that? Oh, I would call for that. Uh, I, will, uh, I will ask pastors to begin talking to their congregants and to begin uh, having hearings. I mean, when you have these kinds of issues and problems, you, you call for hearings. We've also found many customers complain they've never been told of their right to dispute bills in a water board review hearing. This, again, is, it is extremely sad, uh, but I'm glad that uh, we have news channels who, uh, and news reporters who are courageous enough to take on these kinds of challenges and stories. We need to hear their stories. We cannot champion their causes until we hear their stories. And Dr. Macon is also calling for changes in state law that allows disputed water bills to be placed as tax liens on customers' homes. The Water Department so far has not responded. I'm Chief Investigator Ron Regan. Drowning in dysfunction. Tonight, our year-long News 5 investigation is bringing increased calls for reform within the Cleveland Water Department. Our exclusive reports uncover some strong-arm tactics, exorbitant bills, and poor customer service. On your side, Chief Investigator Ron Regan questions a top city official while our findings reverberate inside City Hall. Well, for the very first time, the director of public utilities, who's repeatedly declined interviews about the department he oversees, struggles to answer questions we've been raising for an entire year. No further comments. Public Utilities Director Robert Davis was among a packed Cleveland council chamber where our investigation is now prompting calls for reform. We got major problems in the division of water. Councilman Mike Polenzik reacting to our findings. Customers billed tens of thousands of dollars for water they didn't use. A department ranked almost dead last nationwide in customer service. And strong-arm billing tactics, including slapping water bills on customers' property taxes as liens. We got major, we, we have people losing their homes over uh, monstrous water bills. Elderly people, people on fixed income. That is unconscionable in the city. That is unconscionable. Last month, top we Cleveland know, pastors we were enough. also alarmed at what we uncovered. So we should begin talking to the uh, commissioner there and also uh, those who are above the commissioner. That has now happened. But for a full year, the water department dodged our requests for interviews. So this was a last resort. Um, basically, we just had a conversation uh, about some of their concerns, and uh, we'll continue to meet with them uh, and uh, talk about their concerns and hopefully come up with some resolutions. Can you explain why so many customers believe the department is cheating them? Uh, at this time, I'm, I'm not going to comment on the customers at this point in time, but I think in an appropriate time, we can certainly have a conversation uh, surrounding customer service and, and how I believe that uh, uh, we've gotten better in, in what we do. So well, I would certainly uh, like to welcome that opportunity uh, at a later date. Well, so many, more than 300 uh, have complained to us, and of course, a J.D. Power survey found that your department ranks near the bottom of every department in the country. Can you explain that? Not at this time. Not at this time. But I, I will, again, we'll, we'll talk about this at a later date. Sure. And, and last question. Exactly how much money did the Water Department raise in revenue last year in water tax liens? I'm not sure. You're not sure? Not sure. You're, no. you're the director of public utilities. I'm you're not sure? I'm the director sure. of public utilities, and I'm sure that uh, okay. I have asked but the you, question and getting the information. I can't give are, you the are, number right now. But you're pursuing a policy that could cost people their homes, and you don't know if it's I, I, successful I or not? Uh, I have no further comments. Okay. That's a number you should know. You make north of 100000 a year, <laughs> right? Shouldn't these numbers be? I have no be, further comments. Shouldn't those numbers be right top of mind? No further comments. The Water Department has also spent millions on consultants, and serious questions are now being raised about what taxpayers are getting for their money. I'd like to know what our consultant has done 
to highlight that, to, to drill down as to what the problem is in a division of water, why this is happening. Meanwhile, our investigation into the Cleveland Water Department will continue this year, raising even more serious questions about how customers are treated. I'm Chief Investigator Ron Regan. Another stunning revelation tonight in our exclusive ongoing investigation into the Cleveland Water Department, a cover-up that could be costing you thousands of dollars. On your side, Chief Investigator Ron Regan joins us tonight. And Ron, you found a critical error that can cause water bills to skyrocket. Well, it's an error that could affect 400,000 water meters in 79 communities surrounding Cleveland. They're called smart meters, measuring your water every hour. But we found just one dumb mistake can cost you plenty. Every drop is measured at your meter. And from a tiny box outside, it's electronically sent to the water department. Then you get a bill. That's how it's supposed to work. Supposed to. I would say something's wrong and we're not paying this $300 bill. Randy's a building supervisor at this small Cleveland area business. And there's really nothing in that building except uh, one bathroom, a, a toilet and a sink, and no shower, no laundry. So he begged the water department to check his meter. Is it okay? And he's, well, yeah, it's the same inside as outside. But skyrocketing bills kept coming from the time they put the the first clear reads meter in until the situation was finally straightened out i would say it was over two and a half years frustrated he finally tracked down the installer and she eventually was the one that came out and and said well it's it's not programmed right not programmed right not programmed right the meter was fine the little device on the outside of the building that indicates the meter reading was fine. It looked fine, but was programmed all wrong. The explanation is that they actually had put the decimal point in the wrong place. They should have been billing me for 0.1 MCF. They were billing me for 1 MCF. A decimal point in the wrong place. That means for the typical family of four, instead of 400 gallons a day, the Cleveland Water Department could be billing you 4,000 gallons every day. How could that happen? I eat, live, breathe, and sleep water meters. Meet Tom Kelly. He chairs the Water Industries Meter Standards Committee. That develops the standards for all the different types of meters that are being used within all the over industry. the United States. Yes. And just received the highest award for ethics and professionalism. Have you seen that happen? Yes. Across the country? Across the country. Yeah. Kelly's recognized as the nation's leading expert on water meters and installation. What is most important? When you install a new system like that, the installation is absolutely critical. The bill, what they're asking me to pay, is over 10 times as much as the amount of water we're using. It's a critical issue. I mean, if that resolution isn't set correctly, uh, it has the effect of moving the decimal point over. It could be moved over one place, it might be moved over two places. And the minimum impact of that is going to say that it, it's going to indicate that the customer's consumption is ten times what it normally would be. And that could be thousands of dollars. Yeah, could, yeah absolutely. Customer. It could be thousands of dollars. And Kelly's not alone. This report, citing factors affecting billing accuracy, was published by ITRON, a well-respected global technology company supporting 8,000 utilities. It found many errors can occur during installation that can cause an inaccurate meter read. And it's the same company Cleveland hired to oversee deployment of its 400,000 smart meters in 79 communities. If it happens on a widespread basis, you know, all the, the, the resolution isn't set properly, the utility is going to get inundated with customer complaints about you know, extraordinarily high bills. It's subcontractors, not ITRON, that install and program those meters. So just how widespread is it? 
we obtained water department records showing at least 3,469 brand new smart meters, either repaired or replaced within just a few years of being installed. And with, you do one of these systems, the installation, installation, systems. installation is absolutely critical. Even so, we found the Cleveland Water Department fails to routinely test meters when customers complain of skyrocketing bills. And despite more than 72,000 complaints since smart meters were first installed, it's found only nine with programming errors. The department declined an interview, but in a statement it blamed extreme cold, disconnected cables, and illegal tampering for the majority of meter repairs. They, they should last right longer now, than that. And they should absolutely last longer than that. Do you believe that the water department knows that they have this problem and they're covering it? I them? think some of the people do know that they have a problem. But they sure don't want to admit it. And Randy's bill disappeared with no explanation from the water company at all. Still, both the water company and ITRON insist programming errors are not widespread. And when it does happen, they say it overwhelmingly reports less water is used, not more. But if you believe your water meter is not functioning, the Cleveland Water Department wants to know. Call its customer service number tomorrow morning. 216-664-3130. I'm Chief Investigator Ron Regan. You know, for more than one year, our investigative team has been telling you about outrageous water bills. Tonight, a hidden camera investigation will show you. On your side, Investigator Ron Regan joins us. Ron, ca cameras captured what customers have long suspected. Absolutely. And remember, you don't have to live in Cleveland to get a Cleveland water bill. 79 communities, 1.2 million people get their water from Cleveland. And after more than a year of investigating their complaints, hidden cameras tell the story. Did they offer to help you? No. Cosmo Berardinelli called the Cleveland Water Department when his quarterly water bill claimed $3,000 for water and sewer. So I immediately called the water department and they told me, no, it's not a mistake. And they had told me that the reason was because it ran, the water ran allegedly 24 hours a day for three months. And is that possible? Absolutely not. Three full months went by before the department finally checked his meter. Our hidden cameras caught it all on tape. What they found was a meter that appeared was a faulty meter. Like I said, the computer itself is saying no leaks. No leaks. So Berardinelli persisted. I kept getting to run around. They made me call different departments. Nobody was calling me back. But you can clearly hear a technician tell him the meter may not be working properly. I think you'll be okay. I think something may be going on with the meter. A few days later, Berardinelli arrived for a water review board hearing, a hearing that found the lack of a properly functioning water meter. So they send you a letter and they admit that the meter wasn't working. Correct. And they're still sticking you with half the bill. Yes. They offered a payment plan. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Even though the water meter doesn't work. I can't see how your bill would jump that high if you don't have any leaks right now. He's still being stuck with an $800 bill. So we asked Cleveland's Director of Public Utilities to explain. Why does that happen? Okay. I... Why are customers consistently telling us that they get the runaround from you. Okay. Well, I don't know that that's entirely true. Well, but it I is will true say, in this well, case. Well, this is exactly say, what happened. It's not. I will no, say, it's exactly true. Don't tell me it's not true. I will say that we have made grave strides in this area. We will continue. We have improved in billing. These are exceptions and not the rules. Are you trying to pull one over? No, not at all. Not at all. Not trying to scam them? Not at all. And yet, how did they treat you? Uh, I don't think they listened. Um, I don't think they considered the evidence. I don't think they considered their own data and their own evidence. Um, and I don't think they were fair. Well, the water department now says it's checking into how a customer could still be billed hundreds of dollars with a meter that doesn't even work. I'm Chief Investigator Ron Regan.